Hey guys, welcome back to my channel with another new video of Go Transcript. Today I'm gonna be solving out the MCQ section and the audio for you guys. So request from you is to subscribe the channel, press the bell icon and do uh, like the video, give it a thumbs up. Without wasting any time, let's go to the website to, towards our first question which is do you have to transcribe stutters? This is a full verbatim question. Um, remember guys I always uh, you know tell you guys to use guidelines so we're gonna go to the guidelines and we will go under the section of full verbatim um, okay the text is transcribed exactly as it sounds and includes all the utterances of the speaker those are speech errors false starts filler words slang words stutters there you go right so as per the guideline our right option is going to be B next question is I met dash in Lith Lithuania so the right option you know is going to be A because it's punctuated and spelled correctly next question is if I were a boy I dash understand I could understand number four is a transcriber should italicize alright so we're gonna go to the guidelines and we will see which words are there we can italicize film book magazine song titles as well as artworks plays TV and radio programs photo and expressions etc and these are these are the things or you can say these are uh, the words we cannot italicize which includes media, social media sites, company names, the Bible, books within the Bible, versions of it, or other sacred writings. So the right options are going to be option D, TV and radio programs, option E, song titles, and option F, foreign expressions. Next question, if there is a name or surname you can make out due to a speaker's manner of speech, what are you supposed to do? Okay. We're gonna copy the manner and we will try to find out the answer for it. Here we go. Use unintelligible. It should be in the bolded form in these brackets with the exact timestamp. And unintelligible should start with the lower case. Use unintelligible when speech can be heard but it cannot be understood due to the speaker's manner of speech, accent, etc. So right option is going to be mark as mark it as unintelligible option c next question is i feel dash terrible i feel absolutely and really terrible number seventh question is how should you address direct quotations we're gonna search for the quotations okay double quotations marks are used whenever there is a direct quotation for example she said don't bother me these are this is a direct quotation example so as per this right option is going to be he said i am from pakistan next question is going to be what are the basic rules to apply while transcribing an audio file okay so let's go to the clean verbatim it's yeah it's the clean verbatim question we're gonna go to guidelines under the clean verbatim section here are some rules over here you see that okay so number third longer speeches should be separated into smaller paragraphs paragraphs shouldn't be longer than 500 symbols about 100 words or three to four lines in the transcription tool so right option is option a and then when you scroll down you will see one more thing the beginning of every sentence should be capitalized in clean verbatim and the option C is also the right one next question is which is the correct format according to Go transcripts guideline this is a repeated question I have sold this yesterday as well so um, this is you know the right option which is B because um, we need to separate the spell words with hyphen or dashes let me show you here we go 
this is a spell spelled word and this is how they have separated this word okay one thing is clear right and then there is an internal or direct dialogue and the right format to write the internal or direct dialogue is this so the right option is B last question is what is the correct format of the website links guys this is you know the most Probably, uh, probably the most easiest question of the world. Uh, option B is the right one here. Let me see. I have selected every option from every question. I mean, the right options from every question. Okay, let's go to the audio part. Alright, here we go. Before starting the audio part, I would like to tell you guys something which is that. I was going to this audio the old tests today and I found out that this thing is not necessary or mandatory to write in the test okay it's up to you if you want to write it that's okay if you don't want to write it that's okay also you can check the old test from here all right and the second thing more many of the people are asking about the time stamping uh, that you haven't used the timestamp after two minutes or after or, you know changing or change of speaker uh, when you come to this part you will see one sentence the best uh, sorry the test job needs to be done in clean verbatim without time stamping it does not uh, really means that you you don't have to use the time stamping with inaudible unintelligible or uh, any other tags but it the meaning of, of this sentence is that you don't need to use the timestamp with change of speaker or after two minutes okay and uh, this is the transcription I have done so far uh, using my best abilities and capabilities uh, if there is uh, any mistake you guys are more than welcome to make me correct on that mistake you guys are most welcome to share your knowledge with me in the comment section you want my direct number I'm gonna give you the direct number as well just leave a comment if you have any suggestions leave in the comment section as well so I'm gonna play the audio and let's see if we find the mistakes if you find the mistakes do let me know this audio is used for the transcriber test at Go Transcript. Um, the commercial unit of measurement of cement is the barrel. The unit of shipment is the bag. A barrel of Portland cement contains 380 pounds of cement, and the barrel itself weighs 20 pounds. There are four bags, either made from cloth or paper, of cement to the barrel, and the regulation cloth sack weighs one and a half pounds. Now, the size of cement barrels varies due to the differences in weight of cement and to the differences and to differences in con okay he said and to the differences and to the differences okay she said it twice and as per uh, you know as far as I understand the clean verbatim we we should um, there is nothing like repetitive thing in clean verbatim if one word is been said by said uh, you know for two times you can write it for one time that's okay impacting the cement into the barrel a light burned portland cement weighs 100 pounds per struck bushel however um, a heavily a heavy burned Port portland cement can weigh from 118 to 100 i'm confusing this is it uh bushel or is it bushel into 125 pounds per struck bushel the number That's fine. The number of cubic feet of packed Portland cement in a barrel ranges from three to three and a half. This audio is used for the transcriber test at Go Transcript. Did you see, did you notice something guys? Uh, I was confused about, you know, this word. I just went to the Google and I tried to search it out. I tried to do some research. This is what I would suggest you guys to do research. Okay. And uh, be strong. Don't be afraid of losing or don't be afraid of getting failed. 
you will you will get failed uh, over and over but one day you will get passed as well and this is the most uh, you know this is the easiest transcription I have seen in um, you know from the time I have joined Go Transcript. I can just hear you asking what is a struck bushel? Well believe it or not it's also called a US bushel and it's equal to 2150.42 cubic inches or 35,245.38 cubic centimeters. It's considered the equivalent of the Winchester bushel, a measure used in England from the 15th century until 1824. A U.S. level bushel is made up of four pecks, or 32 dry quarts. Two bushels make up a unit called a strike. Natural cements are lighter than Portland cement. A barrel of Louisville, Akron, Utica, or other western natural cement contains 265 pounds of cement and weighs 15 pounds. A barrel of Rosendale or other eastern cement contains 300 pounds of cement and the barrel itself weighs 20 pounds. There are three and three quarters cubic feet in a barrel of Louisville cement. Usually there are three bags to a barrel of natural cement. This audio is used for the transcriber test at Go Transcript. A popular construction for automatic bucket hoists is that shown in the accompanying illustrations, but let me describe them for you in case you can't see them. The bucket is held upright by guides at its... Okay, many of the people were asking about M. Um, this is a spoken contraction, so that's fine to write it uh, when speaker says, uh, I got you all and uh, fine M, these kind of words. These are the spoken contractions front and rear edges. To dump it out, a section of the front guide is removed at the desired dumping point, which allows the bucket to overturn as shown. A friction crab hoist operated from the mixer engine runs the bucket. The foot of the hoist is set in a pit with the mixer at surface level, but the hoist can be set on the surface and the mixer mounted on a platform. In the latter case, a charging bucket traveling from the stockpile So we're going to search for ladder. People that have been mentioned. All right. Up an inclined track to the mixer platform is generally used. A hoist like this, equipped with a half cubic yard ransom mixer, will cost about 1500 bucks and will deliver 15 cubic yards of concrete per hour. This audio is used for the transcriber test at Go Transcript. Want to know the secret to good concrete? Well, after the selection of good materials, thorough mixing and hard tamping are key. Each batch of concrete, consisting of about 1.2 cubic yards, has to be turned tamping are key. Each the selection of good materials, thorough mixing and hard tamping are key. The selection of good materials, thorough mixing and hard tamping are key. Each batch of concrete. Alright, so there is a mistake I have made, I guess. Um, here is the campaign of tamping. I'm sorry guys, I just, uh, you know, trying to find out um, a word. Um, I think I have made a mistake. Yeah, there we go. It should be tamping, not tamping. ...of concrete, consisting of about 1.2 cubic yards, has to be turned in the mixer for not less than two minutes at the rate of nine revolutions per minute. The amount of tamping is indicated by the fact that about nine men out of 52 on each shift did nothing but tamp. A common mistake too many work sites make is to assume um, that the volume of concrete produced is um, equal to the quantity of stand, sand plus the gravel as indicated in the proportion. Um, sometimes the sand lodges in the voids between the pebbles. If six cubic yards of concrete are desired, nine times out of ten it'll be necessary to use 2.7 cubic yards of sand and 5.34 cubic yards of gravel. 
This audio is used for the transcriber test and go transcript. That's it from the audio section as well. So guys, I'm open to hear your suggestions and your corrections. If you do find some, if you have any questions, do reach out to me. Um, ask for my number. I'm going to give it to you. And uh, in the last, once again, please subscribe to the channel. Press the bell icon. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much uh, for watching the video. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.